Okay, we're going to talk about benefit overview and providers of benefits. It looks like a very book-worthy uh, chapter, but in the exam there are quite a lot of application-based questions. So just bear that in mind as we go through. We're going to talk about types of scheme, who the benefit providers are, and then go a little bit in depth on each one. So, types of schemes. We've got defined benefit, defined contribution, and the hybrid, which is the best of both worlds. And, um, ooh, yeah, defined benefits and defined contribution. This is just from my project. You can see in both schemes, both the employee and the employer make benefits. I mean contributions and then they form benefits with defined benefits the benefit is defined or locked in and with defined contribution the contribution is locked in which means for defined benefit the contributions are uncertain and that's a risk for the employer and for defined contributions the final benefit is uncertain and that's therefore a risk for the employee so yeah different people have different risks or well, different schemes have different risks on the different parties okay benefit providers we've going to have the state we've got employers we've got individuals we've got financial institutions and we've got other corporations the state um, you know they can you know provide benefits themselves do some direct provisioning and financing they can educate the population on the importance of you know saving for benefits they can enable through regulations you know have like that structure in place so that companies can exist and people can save and then they can also take it one step further by encouraging or compelling people with tax and the law those are just some of the benefits the state can give you retirement hospital you know medical care debt benefits uh, debt UIF um, the state can also offer some financial instruments, you know, like bonds with national debt security, um, you know, money market bills. They can do some state-sponsored saving plans, and there's even some state banks. Employers, um, their role is to be the sponsor of the scheme. They could also provide the, the vehicle for which the scheme is, and they encourage or compel employees to provide benefits. Encourage by saying, we'll match whatever you give, and compel by saying, sorry buddy, but 10% or whatever percent of your salary is going to the pension scheme. Now, why do they do this? They want to look after the, the employees, like a bit like a parent. The, the state might have encouraged them or compelled them. You know, they can get a tax benefit. They do it to attract and retain good quality staff. And then the correct position, because, you know, because they're so big, they can achieve economies of scale so they can pool expenses and expertise. You then got multi-employer schemes. Uh, you know this is benefit schemes set up jointly with other employers often from the same industry. The advantage is it makes provisions more cost effective. The disadvantage is more care for allocation of defined benefits particularly if one of the sponsors uh, goes insolvent. Okay, flexible benefit schemes. Employees are offered the option to choose between different benefits which, which they can buy or sell via cash pay. So you can have more holiday and less salary, or you could have less days off but get a higher salary. So it's almost like selecting their benefits from a menu. And this is to meet the needs of different employers. You know, different people want different things. Also, your needs can change. Um, you know, you might get pregnant or have a kid and therefore you've got a dependent so your need will change and it also gives benefits that the employee considers valuable someone who's a workaholic doesn't give a stuff about how much days leave where someone who's lazy then you know days off are very important okay individuals their main role is to finance benefits um, through the schemes that have been provided by you know the state, the employer, or financial institutions. And individuals can also um, use their property uh, for pro for provision in the future. They can sell their home, take a loan of their home. There's a whole bunch of clever things they can even do with their home, and also quite a lot of people inherit homes. 
financial institutions and other corporations. Say we have a company like Allen Gray. You know, they could provide the vehicle in which people could save. And they also like to educate consumers because the smarter the population is, the higher the demand for their products is going to be. We then also have um, other institutions or other corporations, you know, continuing care retirement communities, trade unions, employee associations, and religion, religious organizations, you know, so the church can take care of people and everything. And yeah, that's everything from this chapter. Study hard.